Hello, this is Kevin from the Woodworks Technical Support. This video is titled Significant Changes to U.S. Sherwalls 11. The U.S. Woodworks Design Office Suite has recently been updated to conform with the NDS 2015, IBC 2015, ASC 710, and SpidWiz 2015. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the Design Office Suite, it consists of three separate programs, Sizer, Connections, and Shearwalls. Sizer can be utilized to complete gravity load design. Connections can be utilized to complete the design of the typical fasteners included in the NDS. And Shearwalls, which is a lateral load design tool. Shearwalls can be utilized to design light frame wood shearwalls up to six stories in height. Shearwalls will automatically generate wind and seismic loads following ASC 710 based on input climatic data. The program will then distribute these generated loads to shear lines based on both flexible and rigid diaphragm assumptions. This video will only touch on significant changes which have occurred to the Shearwalls program since the previous version of the software. Just a reminder that for key codes and sales related questions to please contact sales at woodworks-software.com. For technical questions related to the software, please contact support at woodworks-software.com. These emails and the information and information can also be found in the help menu under the About Woodworks Shear Walls button. This is a quick overview of the presentation. We'll start by going over the difference between deflection and capacity-based distribution. Next, we'll look at changes to SpidWiz 2015 in regards to aspect ratios for segmented shear walls. I'll introduce the three-term deflection equation, go over convergence of the two deflection equations, Next, we will discuss what is meant by similar materials. We will then discuss perforated shear walls, uh, changes to wind serviceability criteria, which we've added to shear walls 11, and then discuss the hold down database changes. Finally, I will complete a demonstration of a few of the new features in shear walls 11. Deflection based distribution. What I'm discussing in the next two slides is what occurs along a shear line once a factor load has been distributed to a shear line. When using deflection based distribution, program equalizes deflections along a shear line by equalizing deflections along each segment within the shear line. Once deflections are equalized, deflection is used to approximate the stiffness of the segments, which is then used to distribute the loads to the segments. This is an iterative process, which the software does automatically. Take note of the forces these two segments are receiving when using deflection-based distribution. They are going to change when we look at the same shear line using capacity-based distribution. Capacity-based distribution. Forces are distributed along a shear line based on the relative capacity of the segments. In this case, the capacity of the segments is used to approximate the stiffness. In the case of these two wall segments, the details are exactly the same and do not have any aspect ratio adjustments applied to them. This means that the segments, segment length divided by the summation of the total shear, le shear wall lengths along the line are used to distribute the load. So, 8 feet plus 4 feet is 12 feet. 8 feet divided by 12 is 2 thirds, so 2 thirds of the 1,000 pounds is being distributed to the 8 foot segment. Then 4 divided by 12 is 1 third, so 1 third of the 1,000 pounds goes to the 4 foot segment. The clauses in relation to aspect ratios have been rearranged in SpidWiz 2015. Clause 4.3.3.4.1 has been added and now endorses deflection-based distribution along a shear line as the default distribution method for SpidWiz 2015. If you're using deflection-based distribution and there is a segment within your shear line that has a high aspect ratio between 2 and 3.5, it is necessary to reduce the nominal shear capacity of the segment by the aspect ratio factor in clause 4.3.4.2. Now, if you're utilizing capacity-based distribution along your shear line and you have a high aspect ratio segment, it is necessary to utilize exception 1 to clause 4.3.3.4.1 when, determin when determining the reduction to the nominal shear capacity of the segment. So, to summarize, if using deflection-based distribution, the aspect ratio adjustment equation for wood structural panels comes from clause 4.3.4.2, but if using capacity-based distribution along a shear line, the aspect ratio adjustment equation comes from the exception 1 of clause 4.3.4, sorry, 4.3.3.4.1.
Shear walls tend there were four options for distributing load along a shear line, but now we've decided to remove the options shear walls have equal rigidity and manual input of relative rigidity. Deflection-based distribution is still available and is still the default distribution method. Although if you want to utilize capacity-based distribution, all you must do is toggle the method in the design settings. Three-term deflection equation. In shear walls 10, the only deflection option was the four-term deflection equation. Now for shear walls 11, we have incorporated the three-term deflection equation and give you the option to, of running your design using either equation. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the three-term equation, it is essentially a simplification of the four-term deflection equation where the shear and nail slip components are combined into one shear component. It is now necessary to calculate an apparent shear wall shear stiffness, which is dependent on the allowable capacity of the shear wall segment and the nail slip associated with that segment. SpidWiz 2015 commentary provides guidance on calculating the apparent shear wall shear stiffness, or GA. We're now going to go over some examples using the same shear line details, which are included in the SpidWiz commentary example C4.3.3.4.1. Just to be clear, the SpidWiz commentary example uh, C4.3.3.4.1-1 which goes over deflection-based distribution along a shear line, approximate the approximates the deflection of shear wall two based on the deflection of shear wall one, while shear walls 11 iterates to a solution based on applied load, applied shear loads and overturning forces. The example is useful because it includes a high aspect ratio segment. Although I would recommend trying to avoid high aspect ratio segments when designing structures, is the total deflection of a high aspect ratio segment is multiplied by the aspect ratio factor or aspect ratio associated with that segment. So in the case of shear wall two, the hold down component will be multiplied by 3.48. Here's an elevation view of a shear line in shear walls 11. I just wanna highlight some new features that have been added. First, you'll notice that the segment that the segment that is specified as non-shear is grayed out in elevation view to indicate that it is not included in the shear analysis. Next, you'll notice that we now report the dimensions in elevation view, including the height of the wall, length of the segment, and the depth of the diaphragm. We also now report the aspect ratio associated with each segment. And then finally, if there is a high aspect ratio segment along the shear line, the aspect ratio factor associated with the segment is also reported. This factor is automatically changed for you when you toggle between deflection or capacity-based distribution. In the case of the elevation view here, the aspect ratio factor is based on deflection-based distribution. This slide shows the shear capacity of the shear line when deflection and capacity-based distribution are used. In the top half of the slide, you can see that when deflection-based distribution is utilized, the aspect ratio factor is 0.82, which results in a capacity of 214 PLF per segment 1-3. This 214 PLF is multiplied by the actual length of the wall, so 2.3 feet, to result in a total allowable uh, shear of 498 pounds for the segment. In the bottom half of the slide, you can see the aspect ratio factor that results when capacity-based distribution is utilized. In this case, the aspect ratio factor is 0.58, which results in an allowable shear capacity of 152 PLF for segment 1-3. If you multiply 152 by the 2.3 feet, or the length of the segment, you get 354 pounds as the capacity of the segment. Here are the deflection results for the two segments, which I, which were uh, for the two different distribution methods, which were shown in the previous slide. Deflection in this case is calculated using the three term equation. Take note of the GA associated with the shear line as it is 13.4 kips per inch, which is slightly higher than the GA listed in table 4.3A a speed was 2015 for the this particular wall detail. This is because the GA for each segment in the software is calculated as opposed to just using a lookup table and grabbing 
13 kips per inch, which is listed in table 4.3a. For deflection-based distribution, you can see that the, def the deflection between the two segments along the shear line has been equalized. While for capacity-based distribution, you can see that the deflections are different based on distributing the load based on their relative capacity. As I mentioned, it is now possible to run your design using either the three-term or four-term deflection equation. The default for new files is to use a three-term deflection equation. If you open an old file in the new version, the four-term deflection equation will automatically be toggled, but you can change it to the three-term if you desire. This figure on the right comes from the Spidways commentary and gives a nice graphical representation of the difference between the three-term and four-term deflection equations. Three-term deflection equation is represented by the solid linear line. The four-term deflection equation is represented by the nonlinear dashed line. The nonlinear nature of the four-term equation can be attributed to the nail slip component. The two equations meet at 1.4 ASD level loads. This figure tells us that, that uh, if a shear line is loaded right to capacity, you should have the same deflection whether you're using the three-term or four-term deflection. If a shear line is loaded to about 50% of its capacity, you will see less deflection using the four-term equation when compared to the three-term. We'll do a demonstration of this in a few minutes. The three-term equation is really useful because you should always be able to converge to a solution when using it. In the past versions of the software, you may have come across the warning, could not equalize deflections along shear line. This sometimes appears using the four-term deflection equation because of the nonlinear nature of the equation. Depending on the wall details, segment lengths, hold downs, and the applied load, it is sometimes not possible to equalize deflections between segments along a shear line. So this warning appears suggesting that you try uh, capacity-based distribution instead, or try changing the details of your shear line. To further demonstrate this non-convergent nature of the four-term deflection equation, I'm going to go over two examples. Example one, we look at the deflection convergence within a shear line segment, and example two, we'll look at the deflection convergence between multiple segments within a shear line. So, for this first example, we'll look at the same shear line as we did earlier from the Spidwiz commentary. Except, in, for this example, I have added gypsum wallboard on the interior surface of the shear line. The maximum aspect ratio for gypsum wallboard is 2, as per table 4.3.4 of Spidwiz 2015. So immediately, the program no longer includes the high aspect ratio segment 1-3,1 uh, for the shear analysis. And as you can see in the elevation view, it is grayed out. So now we only have one eight foot segment along the shear line with wood structural panels specified on the exterior and gypsum wallboard specified on the interior. We'll now look at the difference between running this, uh, running this particular shear line using the three term and four term equation. In the case of the four term equation, there is no load being distributed to the gypsum wallboard. Once load is distributed to a seg uh, segment, the, load, uh, the program tries to equalize the deflections between the material specified on the exterior and interior side. This requires the equalization of only the shear, of the shear and nail slip components when using the four-term deflection equation. In this particular case, it was not possible to find a solution, so all the load was distributed to the exterior or wood structural panel side of the wall. Now, if instead you were utilizing the three-term deflection equation, you can see that in fact load is distributed to both of the segments as it is possible to find a solution where the deflection is equalized between the exterior and interior side. In this particular case, we are only dealing with one shear component, so it is much easier to converge to a solution. Overall, the, at the low, low levels in this example, using the four-term or three-term equation, you receive essentially the same deflection. Moving on to the second example. Surely in this example consists of three segments which all have an aspect ratio of one or less. This particular model is small, so the seismic loads that are initially generated are low and the shear line is only low to about 10% of its capacity. Throughout this example, I will be adding additional load 
to shear line B to achieve different levels of loading in relative to its overall capacity. We'll look at the load at 10% of it, at the distribution of, load, of, of the load at 10% of its capacity, 50%, and 100%. In this particular uh, slide, I am demonstrating the behavior of the program when capacity-based distribution is selected in the, in the shear line is loaded to about 10% of its capacity. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to demonstrate that no matter what, when using capacity-based distribution, the loads will always be distributed to all three shear line segments, as long as they are specified as shear walls and not non-shear walls. So. So as we go over the next three slides, we will see the behavior of this graph demonstrated. At 10% capacity, the deflections will be about the same using the three-term or four-term equation. At 50% of the capacity, the deflection of the four-term equation will be noticeably less than the three-term equation. Then at 100% capacity, the deflection using either equation will be about the same again. Now. Looking at the same shear line, but using deflection-based distribution at the same level of load, or 10% of its overall capacity, in this case, all the load is being distributed to segment B-5. The loads are so low in, in this case, the shear line is so over capacity that load is only being distributed to the longest or stiffest segment along the shear line. If we were to look at the, now this slide looks at the deflection of that same shear line when using the four-term and three-term equation. In the screen capture on the previous slide, it was uh, the results were obtained using the four-term deflection equation. And as you can see, load is only being distributed to segment B-5. What you will notice is that when using, if you were to use the three-term deflection equation with the same level of load, the program was able to iterate to a solution where load is distributed evenly, be, or deflection is equalized between two segments. B-3 and B-5, the two stiffer segments along the shear line. So in this slide, we are looking at the deflections when both segments are loaded to about 50% of the shear line's capacity. In this case, it is possible to distribute loads to all three segments, although you will notice that the resulting deflection using the three-term equation is, is much higher compared to the four-term equation. This slide represents the case where the shear line is loaded to 100% of its capacity. In this case, the resulting uh, four-term and three-term deflections are essentially the same. Now that we have gone through all three cases, you can see that we have demonstrated the behavior of this graph using the Woodworks uh, shear walls program. Let's move on to the next topic, similar materials along a shear line. In the past versions of the US version of the software, we followed clause 4.3.3.4 exactly, which states shear walls in a line. The provisions of this section are limited to shear distribution to individual shear walls in a shear line where the individual shear walls have the same materials and construction. So if you had two segments along a shear line and you modify the details to of one segment, it would automatically modify the details of the other. But now the commentary is or C.4.3.3.4 provides guidance on what is meant by similar materials and construction. For example, the commentary states a combination of a shear wall with two inch nail spacing in line with a shear wall with six inch spacing does not violate similar materials and construction type requirements. To accommodate the, this commentary, we have made some modifications to the program to incorporate this ability. If you open an old file created in a previous version, in the new version of the software, the following warning will appear, which states, this project restricts all walls on a shear line to have the same materials and specifications. SpidWiz 4.3.3.4 now allows walls on the same line to have different construction details as long as they are the same type of material. You can activate this capability in the design settings. So if you open an old file and want it to enable the ability to specify different details along the same shear line, you're going to need to go to the settings design tab and uncheck the box. All shear walls on a shear line have identical materials and construction. I'll demonstrate this feature when we do the demonstration later on. Now we're going to discuss perforated shear walls in Design Office 11. Clause 4.3.4.3 of SpidWiz 2015 explains that the aspect ratio adjustment for high aspect ratio 
perforated shear wall segments is applied when determining the lengths of the perforated shear wall segments. Shear capacity of perforated shear walls is already reduced by the CO factor. So the equation for, uh, for adjusting the aspect or the aspect ratio adjustment equation is only applied to the lengths of the segments. Before I show an example that demonstrates this, I just want to mention that it is now possible to pick whether you want to calculate the perforated shear wall factor CO based on looking up a value in table 4.3.3.5 or by using equation 4.3-5. You can pick the method you wish to utilize in the settings design tab. So here's an example of a perforated shear wall with a high aspect ratio segment and elevation view. You'll notice that the high aspect ratio segment, uh, the aspect ratio of the segments is reported as well as a LI associated with the segment. The LI is the adjusted shear wall segment length based on the aspect ratio adjustment equation. At the bottom of the elevation view, you can see the worst case CO determined based on the openings on the shear line, as well as the sum of the lengths of the segments and total shear wall length are reported. Segment on the right was four feet in length and nine feet high. So its adjustment is 0 0.89 which when applied to four feet results in an effective LI of 3.56 feet. The effective length of the perforated shear wall segments is reported in the shear line wall and opening dimensions table of the design results. You can navigate there quickly using the go to table button, clicking on structural data, then shear line wall and opening dimensions. The effective length of, a, of each segment, as well as the sum of the effective lengths are reported in the design results for you. Now, if you're going to calculate the shear capacity of this shear line, you will multiply the summation of the adjusted shear wall segments by the allowable shear and by the CO factor for the shear line. In this case, 8.56 feet times 280 PLF times 0 0.53 results in 1,265 pounds of, for the capacity of the shear line. For Shear Walls 11, we have incorporated wind serviceability requirements from ASC 710 Commentary CC.1.2. Since the criteria comes from the commentary, these requirements can be considered voluntary. I highly recommend reading the commentary to gain an understanding of what serviceability, load, and limits are applicable to your structure. The commentary suggests a drift limit anywhere between L over 400 and L over 600. So in the Settings Design tab, we have added an option to specify the drift limits for wind design. By default, it is specified as L over 500, which is the drift limit uh, associated with wind loads in part four of the Canadian National Building Code. In the load generation screen, you'll now see there are two wind speed inputs, one for the basic wind speed, which is the same as we had in shear walls 10 and is used to design your main wind force resisting system. The load can case associated with the main wind force resisting system is 0.6 W plus 0.6 D. Now, there is an additional input for a three second gust serviceability wind load. To determine what input is appropriate for your structure, once again, I would highly recommend reviewing the commentary. The wind speed maps in the commentary are intended to address shorter period, shorter return period wind events then associated with the P for the main wind force resisting system. The load case associated with this input is WA plus D. The program does not recalculate wind loads based on this lower input. Instead, it determines a factor using the following equation, which is used to adjust the loads for the purpose of checking wind serviceability. In the design settings, if you click wind design, flexible or rigid diaphragm, you will now see two options for deflection and hold down displacement tables, one for the main wind force resisting system and another for serviceability. You also notice the story drift table, which checks the resulting wind serviceability deflection limits. Since we are on the topic of wind serviceability, I want to mention some differences in regards to the GA calculation that you will notice for wind serviceability. If you look at table 4.3a of SPIDWIS 2015, the allowable seismic shear resistance for the wood structural panel from our example that we were looking at earlier is 520 PLF and the allowable wind shear resistance is 730 PLF, which corresponds with a GA of 13 kips per inch. I want to point out 
that if you multiply the allowable seismic shear capacity by 1.4, you will calculate the allowable wind shear capacity of 730 PLF. The 1.4 increase factor for wind design for wood structural panels was implemented in the late 90s. In that time period, wind loads increased significantly. In response, an effort to increase wood structural panel shear wall design values for wind produced the 1.4 increase factor. It first appeared in the standard building code. Prior to that time, the same unit shear was used for both wind and seismic design for wood structural panels. This 1.4 increase was not applied to other materials such as gypsum wallboard. But relative to wood structural panels, there is generally, generally little information on the strength and stiffness of gypsum wallboard. Looking at the same shear wall, we're going to now go over how GA is calculated for seismic design, wind serviceability main wind force resisting system, or sorry, wind design main wind force resisting system, and wind design serviceability. When it comes to seismic design, we calculate GA using the equation from Spidwiz commentary. So in this case, the GA equals 13.4 kips per inch. Now, when it comes to wind design, I mean, wind force resistance system, we do not apply the 1.4 factors in the GA equation. That way, we have the same apparent stiffness for both seismic design and wind main wind force resistance system design. So 13.4 kips per inch. Now, when it comes to wind serviceability, it is already difficult to meet deflection criteria. And we, we decided that we do not want to penalize the deflection calculations. In order to ensure the three-term equation equals the four-term equation when the shear wall is fully loaded for ASD design, you have to correct for both the ASD factor of 0.6 as opposed to the serviceability factor of 1.0, and also adjust for the fact that we are using a different wind load, WA instead of W. For this reason, we employ the following equations based on the ratio of the input wind speeds. This allows for an increase in the apparent stiffness of a segment for wind serviceability. In this case, the input for the shear wall and the apparent stiffness for the wind serviceability design is 16.3 kips per inch. I just want to quickly go over some changes we made to the ignore non-wood panel contribution options in the settings design tab. On the left you can see how this feature looked in uh, shear walls 10 and on the right you can see how this feature has been modified for uh, shear walls 11. So let's go over the different options. The first uh, here, this option will allow you to ignore gypsum for both wind and seismic design. The second option will allow you to ignore uh, gypsum for seismic design only, allowing you to include gypsum contribution for wind design. And then uh, this last option is to inform you that the restrictions based on SPIDWIS 4.3.3.4.1 are in effect. That is, that only wood structural panels and fiberboard panels are allowed unless the force distribution is based on deflection analysis. So, if you were to toggle capacity-based distribution, as I show in uh, the bottom screen capture there, um, the box will automatically become toggled. So, just informing you that uh, gypsum will not be included in the analysis. Hold downs in shear walls 11. I just want to mention that hold down that the hold down database has been updated for shear walls 11 to match current manufacturer hold downs. If you click the hold downs button in, at the top menu, the hold down database will open, and you can see the list of updated hold downs as is shown in the screen capture. Keep in mind that if you open an old file in the new version of the software, any hold downs which were saved in that model will automatically be incorporated into the hold down database of shear walls 11. One other thing I would like to mention about hold downs is that we now allow for you to distinguish the capacity of a hold down that is fastened to Douglas fir or southern pine framing, as well as SPF and hemp fir framing, similar to what current manufacturers are including in their literature. As well, there is an additional input for strength displacement if that information is available from the manufacturer. Finally, let's take a look at the updated program and go over a few of the new features. Okay, so as I uh, went over in the slides, if you open up an old file created in a previous version of the program, you're going to receive this warning. This project restricts all walls on a shear line to have exactly the same material specification. SpidWiz 4.3.3.4 4 
now allows walls on the same line to have different construction details, as long as they are the same type of material. You can activate this capability in the design settings. Okay, so in the past, if I wanted to have different details say along segment 1-3 and 1-1 along this shear line, I wouldn't be allowed to do this. And if I modified the details of this one segment, it'll automatically modify the details of this segment to match it. But now, if we go to the settings design tab and we change and we untoggle this feature here, all shear walls on this shear line have identical materials and construction, press OK, I'll now be able to modify the details of this shear line to be different from this one. So in this case, I'm going to leave segment 1-3 to have 2 inch edge nail spacing, but I'm going to modify this segment back to 6 inch. And you'll see that this, because of I've untoggled that feature, it is now possible to do so. When we run the design, you'll see that this segment has a higher allowable shear strength and will deflect differently based on its material properties. So just go back to the design settings quickly. Just go over a few different uh, changes. Here you can see the perforated shear wall factor calculation. You can pick between the table or the equation. Spidwiz deflection equation, you can pick between the three term or four term equation. This file was uh, op was created in the previous version, so the four term was automatically toggled. But for the purpose of demonstrating three term, I'm going to toggle it. Over here we have uh, rigidity for shear force distribution. You can pick between the deflection or capacity based distribution. I'm gonna stick with uh, deflection based for now. And down here we have the drift limit for wind design. And uh, you can specify what drift limit you wish to utilize for your wind serviceability deflection check. We made some changes to the ignore non-wood panel contribution. Instead of uh, displaying it with check boxes for wind in seismic design, we've created these different toggles. In any case, get back into the program. So in, in plan view, you may have noticed that we now have an additional hatch associated with segments that have an aspect ratio factor applied. So in this case, segment 1-3 has it exceeds the aspect ratio of 2, but it's less than 3.5. So it is going to have an aspect ratio factor associated with it when you run the design. So the idea is that in plan view, you can quickly identify these high aspect ratio segments. You likely want to avoid them anyways, because they do attract more deflection than, uh, aspect than segments that have an aspect ratio of 1 or less. Now, one other thing you'll notice in elevation or in plan view is that in the past you only had the ability to zoom in and out using these two buttons. But now, if you hold the control key, you can and you can utilize the pinwheel on your mouse to zoom in and out. I'm just going to go into the roof blocks and change this to a gable roof. Now, I'm going to review this shear line in elevation view. First thing you should notice is that we now display the roof shape in elevation view. And this is a new feature for Shearwalls 11. We've already gone over the fact that we now also display the, the, ele, the, the height of the walls, segments, and the height of the diaphragm in elevation view as well. If you were to utilize the shift key again, or the control key, and the pinwheel on your mouse, it is now possible to quickly zoom in and out of your model. This will be useful for trying to view forces on large models, on large shear lines with uh, multiple segments. As well, we've made some changes to selected walls. If you toggle selected walls, it's now possible to, if you had multiple stories in your model, to view that entire shear line up and down the structure. This model only has one story, so can't quite uh, show you the feature. So I'm going to change this back to a flat roof. Now let's look at the loads and forces tab. So, or sorry, the load generation site information tab. So I've already gone over this in the video, but you should review uh, it's ASC 710 commentary CC 1.2 to determine an appropriate wind serviceability gust, uh, gust speed associated for, uh, associated with the location of your structure. This is where you would input it. Your basic wind speed is still based, is for your main wind force resisting system design is still up here. 
press OK, and we'll run the design. Lin flexible. So as I, as I went over, we've made, we've made changes to wind serviceability. So you now have an additional deflection table for serviceability, as well as a hold down displacement table for serviceability. And then we have a story drift table where we check the allowable story drift based on the input uh, story drift in the design settings. During the presentation, I went over the effect of, at, of loading a shear line to capacity. If you wanted to do this yourself, and you would have to add additional forces. So if we click on the, if we go to the loads and forces tab, and we go to the load input view, and we add a force, I'm going to add a seismic load point that has already been factored of 2,000 pounds to this shear line. Or actually, let's make it 5,000 pounds. And we just want to make sure you specify the right line. In this case, I want to apply it to line B. Press OK. And just like that, for it, we've switched to seismic design automatically since we just added that force. You can see that all the shear lines are receiving 284 pounds based on uh, flexible diaphragm distribution. But because of the additional factored load I add to this line, it's now at 5,284. And if you were to run the design and go to the seismic flexible shear results, you can see that this line B is now loaded to about just over half of its capacity. As I mentioned, or as I demonstrated, I modified the details of this wall segment 1-3 to be different than the other wall along the shear line. You can see this is reflected within the, uh, within the model with this higher capacity. If we were to review the seismic flexible deflection results, you can also see now that for, G, uh, for the three-turn deflection equation that the results are displayed slightly more different or different than in the past. There's a GA associated with each shear line, and the fact that this shear line has a smaller nail spacing has been reflected in the GA calculation for the shear line. In the case of this model, it was possible to equalize deflections along all the shear lines, so there were no issues with force distribution. All right. So, as a final reminder, if you click about on the Help About Woodwork Shearwells button, you'll find our contact information. For technical questions related to the software, please contact technical support at support at woodworks-software.com. And for questions related to sales of the software and key codes, to please contact sales at woodworks-software.com. Thanks for listening. Hope you learned something.